you have a blessed sixth day today. I'm doing well. It's a beautiful morning. I'm out here in the wilderness and reading the Word of God and whatnot. It's got me a fire going. It rained all night, but I did manage to get some dry wood from out from underneath these trees. But uh, I wanted to make a video here. I wanted to share with you two passages of Scripture and expose some false teachers and some false preachers. Okay. Now I want to read two passages of Scripture. Second Peter chapter 2 with the book of Jude. And you'll see that these two passages of Scripture, they parallel with each other perfectly. Okay. So I wanted to just share this with you, read them to you. And I'll start with Second Peter chapter 2. Okay. Second epistle of Peter chapter 2. The Holy Scriptures says this. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately, that's to say privately, privately bring in damnable heresies, okay? Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth will be evil spoken of. Okay, that's why you see a lot of these preachers out here preaching against the law, talking down on people who keep the Sabbath, things like that. And through covetousness, that means they want something from you. Through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Okay? They'll make merchandise of you. That's why you see a lot of preachers out here, okay? They won't tell you that whole truth. Okay, because they know that if they did, they would offend half the congregation and they would leave. Then they wouldn't be able to pay their bills and buy their toys. They make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Okay, this is talking about the angels in Genesis 6. Okay, and also Enoch 6. The angels that left their habitation. Okay, they came down and they slept with the daughters of men. Creating giants and teaching men wickedness and all these other things. These have no mercy. Okay. And he spared not the old world, but he saved Noah, the eighth person. A preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Okay, we know that Noah was one of eight that were spared on the ark. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example to those that after should live ungodly. And he delivered just Lot. Okay, this is Lot from the book of Genesis. If you've read Genesis, then you know all about Lot. Okay, it says he's just. Okay. But it says here, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Okay, he was involved in, uh, well, he lived in Sodom and Gomorrah, my friends, the angels, before the destruction of the city. They had to literally drag him out of there. They didn't want to leave. Okay. And, of course, his wife looks back, turns into salt. Okay. And uh, you'll see that, that he did all kinds of wicked stuff, right? His daughters get him drunk, and then they, uh, they sleep with their father and bring forth children. Now, you don't have to agree with that. It doesn't mean that it's justified. Okay, there's a lot of things in this Bible. A lot of people, uh, they won't even hear the Bible out because it, they read something like that, my friends. They read something like what happened with Lot and his daughters, and it becomes a stumbling block. And they don't want to hear it. Okay, but listen, these things happen. Doesn't mean that they're justified. Doesn't mean that God approved, but they're recorded in this book. Okay. But he delivered him. He delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knows how to deliver the, the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished but chiefly them that walk after the flesh and in the lust of uncleanness and despise government okay? 
This ain't talking about your country's government. This is talking about the governing of the Lord. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord, but these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, they speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Okay, these people speak evil about things that they have not studied, things that they do not understand. And they shall receive a reward of the unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery, and they cannot cease from sin. Okay? They cannot stop sinning. Beguiling unstable souls. In heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Okay? That means they want covetous practices. Cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, okay? the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Okay, you see Balaam. Okay, we're warned of him in the in the beginning of Revelation. We're warned about the doctrines and deeds of Balaam. Okay, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried away with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For they speak great swelling words of vanity. Okay? This is like that prosperity gospel, like Joel Osteen and all the rest of them. They allure you through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, through wanting. Those that were clean, escaped from them who live in error while they promise them liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same he is brought in bondage this is a scary passage right here my friends ain't nobody should be taking this lightly for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ and they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to return from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Okay. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. Okay. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Okay, that is to say this pig has been clean and it went straight back to the mud. Okay, that's Second Peter chapter 2. Let's go to the book of Jude and read this. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified, that's to be set apart, to set, be set apart as holy, to be specific. By God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called, mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you, and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unaware, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance. He tells you to remember this. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. 
okay? Those people, when they're coming out of Egypt, okay, in the book of Exodus, okay, you read through the book of Numbers, you can see that these guys were complaining, okay? They were complaining all through the wilderness, okay? And on that tenth complaint, which was the giants in the land, okay, the Lord had had enough. He says they won't enter into the promised land, okay? They did not believe. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. These angels made a bad decision, my friends. Okay, they left their own habitation. He has reserved them in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Again, here we have Sodom and Gomorrah, just like it says in Peter. Verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in a like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh they despise dominion and they speak evil of dignities yet michael the archangel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of moses did not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Real simple. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, just like Peter said, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Okay? If you've read Genesis, then you know all about Cain, my friends and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam. Okay, here we got Balaam again. Of course, you see this in Revelation. Okay, we're warned about the doctrines of Balaam for reward. Okay, you see you see Balaam, you can read about this in the book of Numbers, uh, chapter 21 and 22, my friends. Okay. And they perished in the gainsayings of Korah. Okay, I don't know if you know who Korah was, but Korah was 250 that rebelled against Moses, okay, in the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers chapter 16, okay, there's 250 that rise up against Moses. And Moses says, we'll meet up tomorrow and we'll see who the Lord stands with. Okay, and the earth opened up and swallowed up Korah, my friends, all 250 of them. Okay, these are spots in your feasts of charity, okay. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Okay, unthankful people. Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withers. Without fruit, twice dead. Okay, they die that second death you see in Revelation. Plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea. Foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers walking after their own lusts okay they're doing things their way and their mouth speaks great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage but beloved remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our lord jesus christ how that they told you there should be mockers in the last day who should walk after their own ungodly nut lusts. Okay, you see this in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. Okay, they don't have the Spirit, my friends. They don't walk in the Spirit. But beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. It says looking for the mercy 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Paul said, not as though I had already attained, okay, but pressing towards that mark. But you got false preachers out here, okay, that are keeping Christmas with the world, okay, they're friends with the world, and they think that they're the bride and they're going to be raptured out of here. They don't have to do anything. It's false. Okay, and if some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even that garment spotted by the flesh. My friends, we got to have that white raiment. Okay, you read about this in Matthew 22. You'll see that if you don't have that raiment, like in Matthew 22, there's a man that does not have the raiment at the uh, at the wedding supper. Okay. And the Lord tells him, who are you? How'd you get in here? And he's speechless, it says. Okay, and they cast him into outer darkness. He gets thrown out of the kingdom. We must have this white raiment, okay, which is the righteousness of the saints. Revelation chapter 19, okay. We must have this righteousness of the saints, okay. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion, power both now and forever. So be it. Okay? Now, listen, I've been telling you for a long time, my friends. I've been telling you for like two years now. Okay, come out of Babylon, my friends. The way in which those masses are moving is never the way of truth. Okay, I've been telling you to come out of Babylon for two years now. You're living in the last days. There ain't no time to be messing around. Okay, because what you got out here is handfuls, handfuls of false churches, false teachers, false preachers. Okay, you can identify these people by the American flags that they have on the altar of the God. Okay, and listen, these guys have an American flag on the altar. You got all these Christians bowing down to it, praying. Okay, it's idols, my friends. Okay, a friend of the world is an enemy with God. Okay, but yet you got preachers out here keeping Christmas trees with their congregations. Okay, every single December 25th, every single Father's Day, these guys are worshiping solstice pagan gods with the world. Okay, these guys are not teaching you all the truth. Okay, they can't. They can't. Because if they did, they would lose half their congregations. Then they couldn't pay their bills. They couldn't pay for their boats. Okay, and all the rest of it. So they're not going to tell you all the truth. They're not going to tell you, and that's if they even know. Okay, these guys are captive in Babylon. Spiritual slaves. Okay. They speak evil of things that they do not understand, okay? But listen, there's a lot of people out here that are false teaching you guys, okay? They're not going to tell you all about Babylon. They're not going to, they're just holding up the flag with the world, my friends. Think about that, okay? Our Lord told us, he said, look, I'm going away. After this, you won't hear much from me because the prince of this world comes. Remember, Satan took our Lord up into a high place and he showed him the kingdoms of this world. He said, all this I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Okay, and of course, Jesus rebuked him. Okay, but he shows him the kingdoms of the world, my friends. That's what you got out here. Okay, the American flag, all these nations, all these things, the things of this world. Okay, and you got Christians holding these things up, holding up Satan's kingdom. Okay, the prince of this world, he's the God of this world, okay, and he has nothing in the Son of God. I encourage you guys to repent, okay, because listen, it's never not once been in my interest to offend anybody out there, but this stuff is just real, okay? You got to let go of the world, my friends. It says, love not the world, nor the things in the world, okay, that we may please him who has called you to be a soldier, James 4.4 4 says an, an enemy of God is a friend with the world, okay? If you're a friend with this world, what, whatever it's 
whatever it is, okay, you're an enemy of the truth. I want to encourage you guys to come out of Babylon, my friends. Listen, I'll be the first to admit, I was offended, okay? I was devastated when I found out that I was worshiping devils with Christmas trees, Easter eggs. And I'll be the first to admit, I was patriotic as can be. Ask anybody that knows me, okay? All of my shirts were American flags. My friends, the father came to me. He woke me up, okay? And he told me, everywhere you see these things, okay, know that that is a false church. It's Antichrist, my friends. It's another Christ, another gospel. You got Christians coming straight out of church talking about political things, okay, the things of this world. They're not overcoming sin, okay? You can always tell a false church because no one ever overcomes the world. They never overcome sin. Okay, no matter how long they've been there, they come out of church, they got political minds, okay, and they are just caught up in the things of this world. And they know nothing about his kingdom. Okay, he's be he's given us the ability to become kings and priests, and nobody even knows what that is, okay, because they're comfortable with this grace, 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 my friends. I'll be the first to tell you that God is graceful. He's merciful. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't even be here today. I'd already be in hell. I should have died seven years ago. He is full of mercy and full of grace, okay? But we do not have the permission slip to live the life that we want to live and just to sin unlimited sins and have forgiveness, okay? Peter said, that if you're delivered, okay, from those things of the world, if you're delivered and then you go back, you go back like that dog does and goes and eats his vomit up, okay, then it's better for you just not to have known Jesus and just gone to hell, okay? It would have been better just to have gone to hell. It says in the book of Hebrews 10, check this out. It says in Hebrews 10, That those, those that despised Moses' law, okay, right here, for if we sin willfully, okay, this is Hebrews 10, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who has trodden under the foot of the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant? Okay, we do not want to be living in sin. Okay, but what you got out here is handfuls of Christians, okay? Handfuls of them, okay? Unfortunately, they profess him with their lips. But in their hearts, they don't know God, okay? They don't care to know God. They don't grow in the knowledge. They never get past that milk, my friends. They just don't, okay? We're supposed to move forward unto perfection, it says in Hebrews 6, okay? Move forward unto perfection. My friends, I encourage you to come out of Babylon. Listen, I know that these things, Christmas and all of these things that we've been raised in, okay? We're born in captivity, we're born in it, okay? And all these false doctrines. My friends, I encourage you to come out. Listen, I'll be the first to admit, I know your heart is connected to a lot of these things. You got a lot of good memories, Christmas memories with your family and loved ones and everything else, okay? But Jesus said, if you're not willing to leave mother, father, sister, brother, all these things, even your own life, you cannot be his disciple. You just can't. Okay? You got to be willing to leave it all behind, my friends. He said, pick up that cross. Okay, Learn of him, my friends. He wants to pull you out of darkness. He wants you to overcome the world. Whosoever is born of God will overcome the world. Okay, My friends, not only is the world worshiping devils, okay, but they love it that the Christians do it with them. Okay, All the Satanists are wondering why you're keeping their holidays okay seriously all you got to do my friends is go do a go do a search okay go search what saturnalia is 
Go search what Pagan Father's Day is. Okay, these things are wicked. Okay, Satan wants things to appear all good and innocent, my friends, and that's what he's done. Okay, he's infiltrated the church. Okay, the whole world is deceived. It says that if it were possible, okay, he would deceive even the elect. Okay, even the elect. Okay, so if you're not waking up, my friends, you're not the elect. Okay, if you can't see these things, you just you're just not the elect. Okay, you're deceived. You got to come out of Babylon, my friends, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. This stuff consumes the whole planet, my friends. No matter where you go, okay, people are worshiping devils with Christmas trees, Easter eggs, and all the rest of it. Okay, you must come out of the world, my friends. Start learning of His feasts. Start learning of his word. I know a bunch of you just want to chop off that Old Testament, chop off that book of Revelation. It's the worst thing you could ever do, my friends. Okay? I encourage you. Come out of the world. These guys are not going to tell you the truth. They're not going to help you. They're not going to save you. I encourage you. Come out while you can. Okay? These false teachers, my friends, they're on every block. Okay? You got to seek the Lord for yourself. I'll be the first to admit that I took the words of a preacher man over the word of God, even as a babe in Christ, okay, even as a babe, okay, I hadn't had an, an, a Bible open but maybe six months, and he revealed to me that it was the last days, he revealed to me the truth of the Sabbath, okay, when I took it to the church, they're like, oh no, the law's gone and all this, my friends, it's deception, wake up, wake up, okay, all these abominations, these guys will stand and tell you that homosexuality is an abomination, but these same people eat Christmas ham and Easter ham that the, the, the they can't escape it, my friends. They can't escape it, okay? They're eating ham sacrificed unto Tammuz, my friends. That's why you have ham and all these things at Easter and Christmas. That's just what it is, okay? And if you pay attention, that's what everyone does. That's what they do. They keep ham for Christmas. They keep ham for Tammuz on Easter and everything else. It's just what it is. I remember going to a church service where they had a ham cook-off. Okay? For Easter. Wake up, my friends. Okay, these things are abominations. I know you guys get real offended when I come preaching against foods and whatnot. Okay, but was what was once an abomination is still an abomination, my friends. He's the Lord. He don't change, okay? His law is the law, okay? Sure, yeah, you got these traditions of men, okay? The washing of hands and all these, okay? That the Jews themselves made traditions, okay? And the world has carried them, especially Catholics and all the rest of it, okay? But listen, these things are still abominations, including the bacon that you had this morning. I encourage you to wake up. If you don't believe me, just go read Jeremiah, my friend. Go read the book of Isaiah 66. You'll see that in the second coming, he's coming to take vengeance upon those that eat pork and things that are unclean. That's just the truth, my friends. Go read it. Okay? Isaiah 66. Okay, these things are clear, my friends. Everyone that wants to bend Paul's words and everybody else's words, okay, to try and make it look like it's cool to eat whatever you want, my friends, you so got to get in the context of time, my friends, because these guys were not talking about abominable foods, they just weren't, okay, I encourage you guys to wake up, it's never been in my, it's never been in my mission to offend you, okay, I'm not called to come speak smooth things to you, you got enough of that out there, that's all you got out there is smooth things and grace, 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 I'm here to tell you the truth that these guys don't want to tell you, okay? Because when you study the book of Revelation, study the first three chapters of the book of Revelation, my friends, you're going to see that we have things that we must overcome. We must overcome. He only gives to those that overcome, okay? All these doctrines, all these wicked things, Jezebel and all the rest of it, we must overcome if you want to be given of Christ, okay, the ability to eat of the tree of life, a rod to rule the nations with, okay, a new name, a crown of life, my friends, you must overcome, 
I've never tried to offend you. It's never been in my intentions. I know I've been pretty harsh with these things because I'm still pissed off about how deceived we've all been, okay? Spiritual things, my friends, spiritual captivity. You gotta wake up. Please wake up. We're running out of time. The Lord is coming. This is the mark of the beast, you guys. The Antichrist was revealed and no one wants to see it. Okay, they got this big old idea that he's gonna rise up like Hitler, okay, and kill everybody. You're not reading the prophecy. You're not studying the truth. If you did, you would see what time it was. There's only one correct interpretation. There's only one, okay? If you just simply study Daniel's timeline by itself, you'll know. You'll know what time it is. You'll know this is the mark of the beast. You'll know what day the Antichrist was revealed, and he was, because we were living in the correct time as to the Enoch calendar, watching it all play out, my friends, and it has come to pass. Everything in the Bible is coming to pass perfectly, perfectly, okay? It's going to happen. He's coming. Wake up. I love you guys, or I would never even say a thing. You think Daniel Murray would rise up and say something to these guys, to anybody? You guys, the Lord is calling his people out of Egypt, okay? It's the second exodus. You got to come out. Quit complaining through the wilderness, okay? You are being tried. You're being tried to see what you're made of, okay? You're just going to kick and scream and complain through the wilderness? Or are you going to rise up with the army of the Lord, my friends? It's the sixth trumpet army. Wake up. Get in battle. Put on your armor of God, which is the truth, first and foremost. You got to acknowledge the truth. Okay? He is the way. The truth. He is the truth. And the life, my friends, wake up. I love you guys. Come out of Babylon. Come out while you got a chance. I love you. Later.